The movie is divided into three narratives, the first narrative centers around the king and queen of a kingdom named, Long Trellis. At first it seems as if the couple is living a happy life, but later, we get to know that the queen is suffering from a rare medical condition, which will never allow her to become a mother. Because of this, the queen is always upset. Seeing his wife in this state, the king summons the best doctors and physicians from all around the realm, but sadly, none of them are able to diagnose the mysterious illness within her. Despite this, the king tries his best to cheer up his queen. One day, he invites some circus performers to the palace. Suddenly, the queen notices that one of the circus performers is expecting a child. As a result, she becomes envious and starts smashing things after entering her chamber. When the king finds out about this, he pays a visit to her room, and vows to go to any extent to solve her problem. Late at night, a strange necromancer arrives at the castle, claiming that he can solve the queen's pregnancy problem. Hearing this, the king reminds him that many people have tried in the past and failed. However, the necromancer is adamant that the queen can bear a baby, but it depends on how far the king is willing to go for his queen. The king responds to the last extent, the necromancer reveals that he has years of experience, and knows a lot about nature. Furthermore, he says that nature must always be in balance, and that if the king desires a life, he must also sacrifice one. Despite his weird claims, the king and queen give him their full support. After this, the necromancer begins describing the process. The king will have to capture a sea monster, whose heart will be used to cure the queen's illness, then, a pure and unmarried lady will prepare it, which will be eaten by the queen, in this way, the necromancer assures that the queen will become pregnant. Hearing this, the king immediately agrees to hunt down the sea monster, and begins the preparations. The following day, the king sets out on his mission, he finds the creature in one of the rivers. When the monster is sleeping, the king walks into the ocean to attack it. He's eventually successful in slaying the beast, but gets critically injured in the struggle. Soon he succumbs to his injuries, but before he does, he removes the creature's heart. The queen then returns to the castle, covering the heart with a cloth. Later, a maid at the castle is found to be unmarried and pure, as a result, she's tasked with preparing the heart. While cooking, she experiences strange sensations, and suddenly becomes pregnant. Soon, the queen consumes the heart, and finally she becomes pregnant. In the next scene, the maid and the queen give birth to their children at the same time. The boys look to be the same age. The queen's son is named Elias, whereas the maid's son is named Jonah. The movie then fast forwards to 16 years, where the children have now become adults. The queen is living a happy life with her son Elias, as she thinks that she's been given a second chance at life. However, the two children who were born on the same day, and look like twins, are not typical children, as the sea monster is represented by the white tone of their hair, they have a strong friendship and are extremely close to each other. The queen on the other hand, despises their friendship. She informs her son that as a prince, he's not permitted to be friends with the maid's son, Jonah. Despite this, Elias ignores his mother and continues to meet with Jonah. In the next scene, the queen threatens her maid. That if she doesn't prevent her son from meeting Elias, she and her kid will be expelled from the country. Nonetheless, the two seem unconcerned, and meet on a regular basis, they cross the line one day when Jonah wears Elias's clothing, and goes to the queen. When she discovers the truth, she chooses to exile Jonah from the kingdom. Elias makes an attempt to stop him, but fails, Jonah then cuts off a tree with his knife, and water starts to flow from there. He tells Elias that as long as the water is clean, he should know that he's alive, and as soon as it becomes red, he should understand that Jonah's life is in jeopardy. After saying that, he walks away. Elias checks the water regularly to see if it has turned red. One day, the water turns red, and he realizes that something is wrong. In order to find Jonah, he leaves the kingdom without notifying his mother. After a long search, Elias finally reaches Jonah's house. He discovers that Jonah has married a young woman. The people there identify him as Jonah, since they share the same facial features, then, he learns that Jonah had gone to the forest five days ago, and has not returned since. Elias then goes out in search of Jonah, while the queen grows more concerned about him. Left with no options, she approaches the necromancer again, but he asks the same thing. That if she wants her kid to return, she must make a life sacrifice, the queen immediately accepts this proposal. Elsewhere, Jonah is seen injured inside a cave. A flying creature then strikes, and attempts to kill him. After hearing him scream, Elias locates Jonah, and terminates the creature with his sword. 
However, Elias is unaware that the creature is none other than his own mother. But that's what was agreed upon, life for life. In the final scene of the first narrative, Elias ascends to the throne of the kingdom, and the story ends. Following this, we are shown the second narrative, the king and two elderly ladies, Emma and Dora are the focus of this narrative. The king is an extremely lustful individual, who is constantly surrounded by females. He drinks heavily all the time, and is yet to locate his queen. With that being said, he possesses the influence and fortune to marry anyone he pleases. Later, we're introduced to two elderly sisters who reside near the palace. One of them is named Dora, and the other is Emma. Dora is a shrewd and selfish woman, while Emma is straightforward. They hardly leave their house, and are also unmarried. It's certain that they will die there alone, yet their voices sound incredibly pleasant and young. One morning, the king hears Dora singing, and instantly gets smitten by her voice, as a result, he decides to meet her. Soon, the king approaches their door to get a glance of the woman, in his head, he thinks that Dora is young and beautiful. When he knocks on the door, the sisters start panicking, as they believe the king will get angry if he finds out about their appearance. After thinking for a while, they finally devise a plan, and Dora requests the king to come back after a week, so that she will be more comfortable. In the next scene, the sisters strive very hard to make their fingers look young and beautiful. Dora covers her fingers with herbs, but, they still look like those of an elderly person. But on the other hand Emma had put her finger in her mouth for many days, and as a result, it's looking quite good and young. Today a week has passed, and it is the day for the king's visit. When the king arrives there, Dora shows Emma's finger instead of her own. Now the king is not able to hold his emotions, and believes that he has found the love of his life. However, the sisters become more worried, because if the king finds out about their truth, he will most likely terminate them. After a lot of thinking, Dora proposes a condition. She will sleep with the king, only if there is total darkness. And the king agrees. In the next scene, Emma starts tightening Dora's body with glue, so that it may feel like a young girl's body. At midnight, one of the guards from the temple comes to pick Dora up, while there's darkness in the palace. The king sleeps with Dora, but in the morning, he realizes that he spent the night with an old and ugly lady. Enraged, he orders his guards to throw Dora out of the window, luckily, she survives the fall. In the jungle, Dora witnesses magic as a witch arrives there and finds her. With her powers, the witch changes Dora into a beautiful young lady with long hair. The next day, the king visits the jungle for hunting, and falls in love with young Dora at first sight. He brings her to his castle, and decides to make her the queen. Dora doesn't know how she turned into a young girl, but she remembers her sister Emma. She invites Emma to her wedding, who is still in disbelief about her new appearance. When Emma inquires about how she became young, Dora sarcastically replies that she peeled off her old skin. However, Emma considers it to be true, and visits an ironsmith to peel her old skin in exchange for a necklace. The ironsmith appears to be more stupid than Emma, he takes her to the jungle, ties her against a tree, and removes all her skin. In the next scene, Emma returns to the castle in a fragile state, and she passes away soon. Elsewhere, the magic that turned Dora into a young girl doesn't last long, she starts to grow old as her skin begins to fold. When she realizes that she's turning old, she runs away from the castle. The narrative ends on a sad note, as Dora transforms into her older self completely. Following this, we're shown the third narrative, which is also about a king. The king is of a weird nature as his queen passed away long ago, he has an unmarried daughter named Violet, whom he has never truly loved. One day, the king sees a parasite insect on his hand, which is sucking on his blood. Instead of swatting it away, the strange king just lets it feed on himself. Later, he keeps the parasite in a glass box and allows it to feed on his blood every day. As time passes, the insect becomes huge. On the other hand, Violet who has grown to be a beautiful young woman, always dreams of a prince. However, the irresponsible king could care less about her, as he is always busy with his parasite pet. Unfortunately, one day the parasite becomes ill and dies. This devastates the king, so he peels its skin off and tells his daughter that the time has come to find a husband for her. He says that he's going to arrange a competition, and the one who wins it will get to marry her. On hearing this, Violet becomes happy, but also a little upset as she wanted to find a husband on her own. Despite this, she agrees to the king's decision. Soon, announcements about the competition are made throughout the kingdom. 
The king displays the parasite's skin in his palace, and announces that whoever can guess the name of the insect will win. Many people try but no one can answer correctly, because that insect has never grown that big and old. Just then, a weird-looking ogre appears in the palace. He also wants to participate in the competition, and the king hesitantly allows him. The ogre then smells the skin, and guesses the correct answer. Upon hearing this, a devastated violet runs away to the roof, and attempts to terminate herself. However, the king calms her down by saying that he cannot break his promise. Left with no other choice, Violet finally agrees. In the next scene, the ogre takes Violet far in the mountains, where she cries for many days. One day, when he goes out hunting, she sees another lady on a nearby mountain. She begs for help, and explains the whole scenario to her. The lady also sympathizes with her, and promises to come for help. The next day, the lady along with her family arrives there to rescue Violet. While they're crossing over, the ogre arrives, but they successfully manage to cut the rope and he falls. Some time later, the ogre finds the family and eliminates them one by one. He then chases Violet into a cave, and begins hugging her, Violet also pretends to care, but the moment he's distracted she finishes him off with a knife. In the next scene, Violet returns to the palace with the ogre's severed head, and places it next to everyone. She then says this is the husband you chose, and starts crying. The king is also devastated by the sight, and falls to his knees. In the final scene, Violet becomes the queen of the kingdom, and the movie ends here. That was all from the video, I hope you like it, subscribe for more content like this, and hit like button to help us out.